Today, I have something very impressive for you. A detailed test and review on the Uphone Power 18T Ultra smartphone. If you've been looking to buy a rugged military grade phone with some absolutely impressive features, then this video is the right video for you. Let's move. So what does the word impressive actually mean? Well, the definition basically says that it's something that leaves a strong positive impression. And when I first unboxed this smartphone, I was immediately impressed. And after using it for one week, I still have this positive impression. Isn't that the way a proper evaluation is supposed to be made? The Uphone Power 18T is nothing short of that definition. It is a rugged military grade smartphone with a thermal imaging camera. I will demonstrate all of these features later and also explain the importance of this one feature in the real world application. Hence, the reason why it is that I decided to keep this smartphone. Now I'm holding this smartphone in my hand and it does have a superior build quality as compared to other smartphones. And impressively, it's big, but not too heavy where it would seem difficult for me to carry this around. So let's talk about the display. The display is a 6.58 inch full HD plus IPS panel for vivid, accurate RGB colors. And I was impressed visually, not only the colors, but also the sharpness of the screen. The screen resolution is 1080 by 2408 pixels and the aspect ratio is 20 by 9 with 401 pixels per square inch. The screen luminance or brightness results in 538 nits of brightness. Not extremely impressive, but let's touch on this for a moment. Is 538 nits of brightness enough. And the most comparative question is, with other smartphones of this caliber, do they also have the same levels or the same results? Well, I can name quite a few top class smartphones that all max out at 500 nits. And let's, for the sake of argument, agree that 500 nits is acceptable for most indoor smartphone users. Point well taken. The refresh rate can be set to either 60, 90, or 120 hertz. The touch sensitivity, the animations, and when opening and closing apps all appear to respond relatively smoothly. Now let's talk about the internal processor. It is a MediaTek Dimensity 7050 5G version with an eight core processor at six nanometer technology. The CPU clock speed is 2.6 gigahertz. And when compared to the Qualcomm Snapdragon Gen 2, for example, well, this CPU is roughly 25% slower, but surprisingly, the GPU speed tested at 16% faster than the GPU speed of the Snapdragon Gen 2. So that gives you a rough idea of the processing power. The RAM memory is at 12 gigabytes plus 12 gigabytes expandable for a total of 24 gigabytes. Impressive. And the storage capacity is at 512 gigabytes of space, which also is expandable to two terabytes on a micro SD card. Hence, another reason why I decided to keep this phone. I currently have 512 gigabytes of storage, giving me a total of one terabyte. And you can buy the SD card that I have on this phone with the Amazon link in my description. Okay, let's talk about the operating system. This runs on Android 13. In my testing, I showed that I had no glitches, no issues, no freezing, nothing of that sort when I was using this. And it seems to be very reliable and stable. Now this device supports three impressive rear cameras and one front facing camera. The main camera is 108 megapixels with a massive 1.5 inch sensor at f-stop 1.89. There is a macro camera lens at five megapixels. The f-stop is 3.0 and it has 60 times close-up magnification with tiny LED lights around the actual lens for close-up illumination. The front facing camera is 32 megapixels with an f-stop of 2.0 and it's capable of shooting 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now the third camera is an advanced imaging thermal sensing camera. It measures temperatures ranging from minus 10 degrees centigrade to 752 degrees Fahrenheit. Completely and totally impressive. I'm going to be demonstrating these features and its practical uses on this device very shortly. Hopefully this might be something that you may also have use for. Now, in regard to the camera modes, 
there is a microscope and you can select either 30 or 60x magnification. And the results that I found when taking close up photos and live video were nothing short of impressive. You can see the utmost closest details in just about anything. This is something that you won't find in most smartphones and I can imagine the benefits of having a microscope that basically is always in your back pocket. In video mode, you can shoot 4K 30 frames per second, 1080p 30 frames per second. Video mode also has EIS, electronic image stabilization, and my testing showed that this stabilization was comparable to what I'm getting from my other smartphones. I also ran EIS when zoomed in, both video and photo. In picture mode or photo mode, the aspect ratio selections were 4x3, 16x9, and 18 by nine, hmm, never heard of that one before. With continuous shooting at five, 10, or 20 frames per second. You also have a watermark feature for photos, touch capture where you can simply just touch the screen to take a photo, grid lines, and a whole bunch of other settings which I'm gonna go over in this video. Now there's a beauty mood for all of you beautiful people out there. A portrait mode similar to the features that you have on most phones, 108 megapixel camera with a 10 times electronic zoom capability. Now, in the real world, on any camera. You wouldn't want to zoom in 10 times trying to take photos or videos unless your hands are super stable or if you have this thing cemented to a tripod. At that level of magnification, it is impossible to hold it still. This phone struggled with this feature a bit, so I would render zooming in and out while taking videos or photos to be something that is completely unacceptable. Now, more modes are available, such as pro modes, where you can have auto or manual settings. White balance can be adjusted. ISO, exposure values can be adjusted. There is a portrait mode that allows you to be able to adjust the bokeh and have blurry backgrounds. GIF is something that was very useful too. Very cool feature where you can have short animated videos where you can use those for graphics or social media. There's also a panorama that worked very well as long as you kept the camera moving very slowly and you also kept everything very still and level. Now, slow motion also worked very well and I was able to capture video at 100 120 frames per second. Now the only caveat is that I needed more light for clear crispy images. There is mono and black and white photos with 10 times zoom, a QR code scanner which allowed me to scan a QR code and link over to a website that worked perfectly. Now let's talk about the battery. This phone has an impressive high capacity battery. Now why is this so important to understand in regard to the pros and cons of having a bigger battery on a smartphone? Well, higher density batteries discharge slower, meaning that they will last longer and they have a smaller self capacity loss. This is the reason why this phone has a standby time lasting at 524 hours. What? A constant call time rated at 40 hours. What? And a gaming time at 15 hours. I don't need to say what this time, okay? Just impressive. I was using this phone constantly during the week for five days and I only needed to charge it once. Now it's your turn to say, it comes with a 66 watt charger and my test showed that it took only 24 minutes to charge this phone from zero to 50%. Important note here, there is a built-in power management chip to prevent this phone from overheating or overcharging. You see, anytime that you're dealing with a large capacity battery, overheating is something that is very important and crucial in regard to safety, the operation and efficiency of this phone. Now, how about the networking features and connectivity? Well, there's 3G, 4G, 5G with Wi-Fi 6, which by the way is three times faster than Wi-Fi 5 and has a much lower latency and wider signal bandwidth. Wi-Fi 6 is also known as 802.11ax since it's been around since 2019 for enhanced Wi-Fi capability. Now on Bluetooth, we're talking about 5.0 and the phone is equipped with GPS and NFC. There's also a built-in FM radio, meaning that you do not need an antenna, you do not need external headphones. This feature will work straight off the phone. You don't have to download an 
app and it's something that does not exist on any other smartphone. Now, for the main feature, the thermal imaging camera. Let's take a look at this feature and discuss the key points as to why this might be useful for you. Now, I guess the first question here is what exactly is thermal imaging and what applications would this apply to in regard to what I'm doing, right? Basically, this is a temperature measurement device primarily used for industrial applications, building inspections, surveillance, security, law enforcement, and fire departments. For civilian applications, these uses are also available and also valuable. You see, I've been using this extensively, especially since the temperature here in Las Vegas has been so cold, and I have needed some additional resources to find out and to be able to detect where am I losing heat in my own home. Well, I'm demonstrating this for you now so you can see that I can detect all of the heat variations, temperature ranges, areas where there might be heat loss, cold air entering in through the cracks, and also some areas where there might be water leaks within my own home. Now, I'm not sure about you, but in the state of Nevada, if I wanted to have someone come in and inspect my home in regard to all of these temperature concerns, that would cost me an arm and a leg, but it doesn't need to cost an arm and a leg because I have this smartphone that will be able to pull the results for what it is that I'm looking for instantaneously. Impressive. Now, this technology is not available on most other smartphones. So need I say more about how impressive this device actually is? With all of these features and more, such as the built-in fingerprint scanner, face detection, dust and waterproof resistance, IP68 and IP69, headphone jack, SD card expansion slot, dual SIM capacity, a USmart connection for professional external devices to be connected, a rear LED flashlight, and it is bright, walkie-talkie, push-to-talk, custom side button, and so much more. Some would say that these features that I just mentioned are considered as obsolete, right? But I would say that some of these impressive features exist simply because the technology today refuses to support them. So after all of this on a review of the Yule phone power 18t the question here is would you use this phone as your daily driver and the answer is for me yes and no now recently mkbhd said that he always carries two smartphones impressive and in this scenario the power 18t has features that no other smartphones have so my conclusion i will be carrying this phone as my daily driver but i will be carrying two phones simply because this phone has features that my other phone does not. This is a compelling reason to go get the phone, right? Well, stay tuned. I'm gonna have some more impressive videos for you coming up. Hit that like and subscribe button. And until then, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.